I don't know if it'll happen or not, but can they pull it off? Yes, Max, I'm still holding out hope. No, I would say uh, you should not hold out hope. Your Steelers are cooked, Stephen A. Um, first of all, Mason Rudolph's not good, at least not yet. He doesn't throw the ball down the field and, and played poorly in the first half of the game especially, and um, they have injuries at running back, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Look, the Steelers have a good defense, and when you look at their losses, some of their losses this season have been quality losses if there's such a thing. This isn't college, but still. Um, the Seahawks, the 49ers, uh, the Ravens, those were competitive games. You know, they got blown out by New England early, but they played competitively with some good teams. I think it's asking too much to ask if th them to make the playoffs, Stephen A, because I don't see them as a wild card, so you're asking them to win the division. And the difference is third-string quarterback versus Lamar Jackson. Look, I know it's more than that. I know you there's a as I mentioned the Steelers have a good defense and and they have a great coach but that's really to me what it comes down to I don't believe in who the Steelers have under center this year now I do believe in the coach Stephen and I think to me a more interesting question is actually can Mike Tomlin go 500 with this crew. Can he go 500 without Roethlisberger? I thought that ship had sailed but you turn around you go they're almost 500 now and when you look at their schedule. Like, like all NFL teams, they play some good teams, but this is not a particularly tough schedule the rest of the way. Colts, Rams, uh, Browns a couple times, Bengals, Jets, Bills, Cardinals. Right. They right. end with the Ravens. Like, that's not a right. killer schedule. So, if Mike Keep Tomlin speaking. can go 500 with a third string, second and third string quarterback, that's an mm -hmm. amazing accomplishment. Remember, he's never been below 500 throughout his career as a head coach, but he's always had Roethlisberger. Not this year. It'd be amazing if he could do it. Well, you got to remember, Max, the key thing is the schedule that you just brought up. Okay, Baltimore beat them earlier when they faced one another. It was 26-23. I think that was an overtime victory, if I remember correctly, by the Ravens, okay? Could they get Baltimore in a rematch in the season finale? Quite possible, but tick, uh, you got to look at that. Then we have a situation right here. You got the Bengals, okay, and of course you got the Cleveland Browns twice. All winnable games. Let's keep that in mind. Then also you've got um, – the New York Jets, the Arizona Cardinals, the Buffalo Bills. Now, obviously, you got to pretty much run the table. I mean, I can assume that you might lose to Indianapolis. I can assume you might lose to the Los Angeles Rams. But outside of that, you've got six to seven games that are incredibly winnable for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And if you do that, you talk about 9-7, and 10-6, and six, and hey, I'm going to hold out hope. What's wrong with that? Particularly I'll in the AFC North, where the this. Baltimore Ravens look good in most instances, but then you remember when they went to bed against the Cleveland Browns earlier this season, you just never know. I'll tell you this. You talked about yesterday, Golden State, and the fact that defense, you can, act, you can put in effort in basketball. The thing that I'm looking at the Steelers right now, like you think coaching doesn't make a difference or you think like if you're not an X's and O's guys, cause, guy, because Tomlin's not considered an X's and O's guy. But the way you coach up a team and get them to play together in a unit doesn't make a difference. Look at the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. They do have a chance, I think, to go 500. I do not see them making the playoffs. But if you see the losses, the close losses to those quality teams that I mentioned, and you see the struggle of the Browns, largely put on the coach by many, including you, by the way, um, you see the difference a guy like Tomlin makes. This would be, in certain respects, his greatest achievement. Were he to make, I, I'm saying go 500, you're saying make the playoffs. In a way, it would be his greatest achievement as a coach because the knock on Tomlin has, be, has been he inherited someone else's team and has always had a, a, a future Hall of Fame quarterback. Not anymore, he doesn't. He does not have that anymore. If he were to pull something like that off, it would be maybe his crowning achievement and put to bed a kind of persistent criticism about him as a coach. I just don't see him doing it, Stephen A. Well, I don't listen. think the Steelers have enough firepower, especially now with injury at running back. Yeah, yeah, you're entitled to feel that way because you're coming from a very pragmatic perspective. And if I was doing so, I would totally agree with you. But I'm being emotional here, Max Kellerman. Work with me a little bit, okay? I got to hold out some kind of hope. If you got the Jets on your schedule, to, uh, get the Bengals on your schedule, two games against the Browns on your schedule, the Ravens on your schedule, and the Rams still trying to figure stuff out, I mean, you can hold out hope. Look at the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. James Conner had his first real game, as far as I'm concerned. It was against the hapless uh, Miami Dolphins. Had a rush for 
100 yards all season long, first six games. We get all of that. We know what the Steelers are working with and what they're working against. We understand all of that. All I'm saying is the real point of contention within the AFC North is the Baltimore Ravens. And I believe that if they find themselves struggling, hiccuping along the way at any particular juncture, I like the Steelers' chances. Do I believe it's going to happen? Hell no. It's just too much stacked against them. But I'm holding out hope because, damn it, I'm emotional. It's my Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not apologizing for it to anybody. Antonio Brown Let messed me it ask. up. Le'Veon Bell messed it up. Big Ben Roethlisberger getting injured messed it up. I mean, the dysfunctionality from last year that caused all of this, the transpires messed it up. But I'm still holding out hope. I got to hold on to it, man. Real quick, Stephen A., real quick. Juju Smith-Schuster. I was saying yeah. last year he is a number one receiver. You said, careful, mm -hmm. with that Antonio Brown there, we don't know if that's the case. He was not very good for some of this year and, and made you look pretty smart, but I look smart this morning. Where are you on Juju Smith-Schuster as your number one receiver? Right now, he's got about 30 receptions for 443 yards. I still don't think he's proven he's a worthy number one. He's incredibly talented, but I think ideally... Uh, he's an elite number two. I think being a number hmm. one has exposed him to some degree, but in fairness to him, with Big Ben Roethlisberger going down, how can we truly, truly right. tell? So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's almost like you got to give him a mulligan for this particular season. And he had a big night last night. Because without Big Ben, it's hard, it, 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 it's unfair to judge him uh, uh, too stiffly mm -hmm. uh, without Big Ben Roethlisberger. That, that would be, that would be my, my thing about him. But I still view him as an elite number two as opposed to a bona fide number one the, at this yeah. particular juncture. The jury's still out, I guess, especially one. your big night comes against the Dolphins, so what? But the jury's still out, but the, the signs are pointing in the right direction for Juju Smith. Of course. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.